back again uh, at Cisco in Herndon, Virginia with uh, Bruce Klein, Senior Vice President for Public Policy uh, and Public Sector for Cisco. And, and Bruce, thanks for being here. Smart Connected Communities. Uh, yes. We've been hearing about this, a big initiative for Cisco. Tell us what it's all about. Um, it's a very big initiative for us. And we, we see, because the network here really becomes a platform to make Smart Connected Communities a reality. What, what we're seeing is a, that cities, states, even on, on the federal government side, as they look at the network as a utility, really becoming the fourth utility, mm -hmm. the promise of what you can build out in these various domains that I'll talk about, and we, we talk about smart connect, connected communities in different tracks. Smart education or intelligent education, 21st century education, mm -hmm. public safety, energy, some of the work we're doing with smart grid, as well as uh, smart buildings, uh, hospitals and healthcare is part of smart connected communities, government services is part of smart connected communities, and if you look at all of those services being part of a city, being part of a state, being part of the federal government. How do we connect those services to deliver services to the citizen? And that's what Smart Connect Communities is about. The network becomes a fourth utility. And yeah. out of that, what you get is this really creates economic, social, and environmental sustainability. And we look at creating jobs based on this approach. Right. We look at creating new services socially and connecting people. And we look at environment and thinking about in a city, you know, 20 mega cities in this world use 75 percent of the, the country, the world's energy. Mm -hmm. That's a major problem. We've got to solve. We've got to be more energy efficient. So that's another area of smart connected communities. So we, I mean, politicians can debate what to do about global warming, but in the meantime, with smart grid and smart buildings, you can do a lot to start saving energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we did a project at the state of Missouri where we connected upwards of a thousand buildings with this smart building concept and within the first year they saved 20 percent on the utility bills. So mm -hmm. and then immediately paid for setting up that type of environment. Mm -hmm. There's great promise in, in that sort of technology and smart buildings. Smart grid, we got pilots going right now in Miami with Florida Power and Light. Mm -hmm. So there's, things are starting and we're going to see a lot more of that in the coming years. Now, I know you've done a lot of this overseas as well. Any great examples there that we could uh, take a look at and uh, talk about? Yeah, uh, with Smart Connected, we're building an intelligent city in Korea, in Incheon, and working mm -hmm. with a developer, because it's also kind of a new concept where mm -hmm. you're working with developers. Right. This was a developer uh, named Gail out of New York who's building this city, mm -hmm. and they're going to be building the technology into the city where, if you think about it, we have high-end video conferencing technology that will be built into someone's condominium mm -hmm. or apartment right. and out of that that becomes their um, TV that becomes their phone video phone and that becomes their access to all these government services where if you think about what your iPod looks like today with all these different applets on mm -hmm. it think about your TV with all those applets on it but if you want to if you want to sign up to have your child tutored by somebody an expert could be anywhere you know you click a button and now you can sign up to have them tutored for X cost that cost goes back to the city, right. and they, rec they, they generate revenue out of it, and a service is supplied to that citizen. And your driver's license, all these different applets can be built and delivered right into the home. Well, so rather than having to retrofit an existing city, when you get in on the ground floor and you can wire it, then you're all set for the future. Right. It's just it's a, it's a way money. it becomes, yeah. the network becomes a service delivery mechanism mm -hmm. to provide services that we typically don't get today. And that's That's the... That's where we're going to see the second generation internet playing the biggest role. And so where are we going to see in the U.S.? Who, who's, uh, who's looking to start doing this? You talked about Missouri. Are there other there, are, there There's a, no, a number of pilots. Some of them we can't talk about today. Sure, but uh, I'll just give you, a, a, for instance, in, in one state that we're looking at, and they're looking at training nurses in rural areas. Mm -hmm. Typically, those nurses would come to a major university. They would get trained. They'd get their degree, and they would stay in a big city because they didn't want to move back to the rural areas. We're using this type of collaboration technology to train them where they're at in those rural areas with public and private partnerships so they have jobs with the local health care mm -hmm. facilities right in that area. And now you have trained professionals and, and you're able to deliver rural health care by, by using the collaboration technology to keep right. them there. Right. That's just an example of things that we're doing. Great. Well, this uh, sounds interesting. We look forward to seeing how that develops. Thank you. Thanks for being Thanks, here. Tom.